Hi. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Like and subscribe, all that good stuff. You know exactly why we're here today. There has been a seismic shift in the, the momentum and the standings. There has been something significant that's happened today, which means Celtic have the upper hand, have the advantage heading into the split in what was a title race. But Celtic have taken one massive step forward in the title race we are the, the team in a dominant position. We've got to cover all the ground. I was not expecting to make this video today. Yesterday I said at the end of the match reaction, let's hope Ross County or Dundee can do us a favour this week. I assume Rangers will take all six points. <laughs> Ross County 3, Rangers 2. No, I'm not here today. A Rangers match reaction, don't worry. It does kind of feel like that in a sense. It feels like I'm sitting down here to do a match reaction to a non-Celtic game, but I'm here to talk about the, the bigger picture and ultimately the fundamental difference that it's going to make to the title battle from here to the end of the season. Celtic have got themselves in a fantastic position through hard work, through keeping the heat down, from just staying focused on the final kind of dream of winning the league title. You know, we've taken it a game at a time, we've done things the right way, we now find ourselves in a good position. It's a position that we can't take for granted, it's not one that we can get high and mighty about just quite yet, but I mean, if you said to me before we kicked off yesterday that Celtic could be four points clear of Rangers, I would be absolutely delighted with that. I would have chewed your hand off walking up Springfield Road yesterday if I knew that we could have seen a Celtic win and a Rangers loss this weekend. It is massive. Uh, and it can't be understated how the ramifications of this benefit Celtic. It, it's very, very, very important now for us to stay focused, focus a game at a time. But look, we, we've seen what's, what's happened today and quite rightly Celtic fans are getting excited. Last week, Philip Clermont said that Rangers took the moral victory at Ibrooks after we squandered their two-goal lead, after we squandered their last gasp, what looked like a winner. Uh, Rangers walked away with a point in their home stadium. They saw it as a fantastic result. Celtic saw it as, OK, that's that done, we move on. It was a moral victory for Philip Clermont, of course, and today he stormed up the tunnel. Stormed up the tunnel at full time because he knows what's happened. He knows that right now Celtic now are the favourites to win the league title. This is don't get I don't want I don't want to come back to this video in a few weeks' time and, and look at myself and think that I'm an idiot. This is not a video of me sitting here saying that Celtic have won the league, that that's it finished. Absolutely not. So if you think you're gonna try and clip wee bits, Rangers fans, so you can use it in a few weeks' time, should things reverse themselves. There's really no point, because that's not what I'm here to say today. But Philip come on stormed up that tunnel today because he took that moral victory last week. And he threw it away for a moral loss this afternoon. Um, last week was frustrating for Celtic fans on so many levels. And I don't know how I feel after today. I don't know if I feel like it makes it easier to take last week. Or if it makes it even more annoying. Because if we left Ibrox with three points, then I would be saying the league's done. If we beat Rangers at Ibrox last week, they lost to Ross County today. I probably would have been sitting in this chair saying, that's it, the league's finished. But at the same time, would this have happened today if Rangers... Uh, lost last week. I don't know. So it makes last week easier to take. It puts us in a position where I couldn't have dreamed of being. I mean, we look at that point swing that, that, that happened over the course of November and December time when we squandered that massive lead that we had at the top of the Scottish Premiership. And it felt like all the momentum was with Rangers. Um, now, as I said at the start of the video, I feel like there's been a seismic shift. And I feel like the same mentality that has rotted through certain players at Rangers and, and certain supporters at Rangers is now coming back. That high and mighty effect and the lessons haven't been learned, you know. I said this at the start of the season, you know, when, when Brendan Rodgers came back and people were giving it, you know, Michael Beale was going to drive Rodgers up the road and then Beale was sacked so early into the season, I said, well, you should keep your mouth shut. This is exact. Celtic fans keep their mouth shut. I've never once came on this channel, even when we were, what, how, what was the gap again? We were 9 or 10 clear back in November, I can't even, it was maybe even more than that. I didn't come on here once and say, well that's it, league's done. You've got to focus at a game at a time. The thing is, with Rangers, players like Tavernier, players like Goldson, players like Cantwell, the same old losers who have been there year after year, and the pressure's getting to them. 
and we're watching it and for in front of us. Once again, not me saying that the league is over, but what I am saying is, why not just take it a game at a time? Why not just look at it for what it is in the moment, you know? Be happy with your result. Be happy with getting the point last week at Ibrox. Move on to the next game and don't get high and mighty. And look where we are now. It feels like history is once again repeating itself. Remember a few years ago at Dingwall? It was Ross County 3, Rangers 3, and there was a massive turning point in what was a title battle back then. Dingwall again this year. A change in who might be the favourites for this league title. It feels like history is repeating itself. We now head into the split in the perfect position, considering where we could have been and where a lot of, I think, of Celtic fans thought we were. It was really doom and gloom amongst their support. I think a lot of people forfeited the idea of challenging for this league title a few months back. Brendan Rodgers spoke very openly earlier in the week about the growing confidence. We got a 3-0 win yesterday, a dominating 3-0 win against St Mirren, who are a top half side. Uh, well, Rangers going to lose to a team who's in a relegation battle this weekend. If that doesn't aid the confidence of this Celtic team and these Celtic players, which is full of winners, by the way, um, and full of players who have been in, in battles like this in tougher situations, um, if that isn't more to add to the confidence, I don't know what is. But the main thing is now we've got to just take the advantage from this and, and, and mentally and, you know, numerically when you look at the league table. You know, we are top by four points. Should Rangers beat Dundee, we're still clear by a point. But the, the biggest takeaway from what's happened today in the Scottish Premiership is that mental battle needs to be won by Celtic. We need to now put the heads down and look at every game for what it is. I don't know who we're going to play first in the split. We'll find out later this week, um, this week coming, who we'll be playing, what order and what venues. But we just need to look at it a game at a time for what it is. It's as simple as that. There's no point in thinking ahead to, to, to Celtic Park against Rangers when we don't even know the date of said fixture. It's a game at a time and we use our winning mentality to come out best come the end of this league season. That's ultimately what we're best at doing and it's ultimately what I expect to see from a manager like Brendan Rodgers who's won seven out of eight trophies in his time in Scottish football. A man who won back-to-back -back league titles in his time here. A man who knows what the, the mental test is all about, being in charge of a club like Celtic. We just need to look at it for a game at a time now and, and take advantage of the position we find ourselves in. And the good thing is, with the confidence that's growing, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling optimistic. Um, I'm looking forward to these games. I'm looking forward to when Rangers come to Celtic Park because I think we showed last week at Ibrooks that we are the top team in this country still. So we've put ourselves in a brilliant position here, and that's just by, you know, getting on with our own our, our own work, our own job, not using excuses, and just firing on. That's that's exactly what Celtic have been about for the last few years, and it's aided us quite well, winning ten of the last, sorry, eleven of the last twelve league titles, um, and hopefully we make it twelve out of thirteen. It's hilarious looking at the reaction uh, on social media to, to what's transpired today and quite rightly Celtic fans living it up a little bit as you should, as you would in any side of the, the split. It's the whole point in the, the back and forth between the two Glasgow sides. We, we wouldn't be in the position we are historically um, and, and, and famously in world football without that back and forth and we're all living it up a wee bit aren't we? You've got to. And yeah, I, I, I know I've been preaching throughout this video, you know, we'll do our talking when the season's finished but you know, I've looked at my comments section for the last few months and it has been full of Rangers fans who have said that the league's over. That said that Rangers had won it and that's ultimately the downfall, isn't it? And it's great to come on and make a video like this um, because the league was never over and it's not over now. It's over when the last ball was kicked on match day 38. That's when we'll declare who the champions of Scotland are. It's not going to be John from Govan um, back in December who was giving it me. Uh, in the comment section, you know, it's going to be decided through, you know, hard work, perseverance and ultimately who's the, 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 the better men and the better team and right now it is looking like Celtic as I kind of expected it to go. Um, I never once doubted that we could still keep ourselves in this even when we were struggling and even when we were losing games, uh, I knew that there would, become a, there, would, there would come a mental battle which Celtic would be better equipped for with the players, the squad and the manager that they've got. Today, I think Philip come on showed a real mental weakness, um, which I love. Another manager who has came in here and been a blabbering fool, in my eyes. He was somebody who, when he first came through the door at Rangers, I'd seen a lot of Celtic fans, and even myself was a, a, a smidgen guilty of saying, you know, oh, come on, it's not as bad as the rest. He's coming in, he's getting on with his job, he's, he's, he's no bothering with the outside noise, he's just focused on it. 
today coming out blaming the fact they never played Dundee, uh, storming up the tunnel, not even shaking hands with the opposition, it's the marks of a defeated man to me. Um, and I love it. I absolutely love it. And it, it hasn't shut up. And that, that comment last week about moral victory. What moral victory? What's a moral victory in a draw at home when you're trying to win a league title? If that was Celtic in the position last week, drawing at Celtic Park, I'd have been gutted. But no, the moral victory is all that, that Clermont needed. Um, so, I, I find it entertaining, to say the least. This whole, in his, his press conference, alluding to the fact that the Dundee situation has led to them losing to the... Um, how? If anything, does that not aid your chances of winning? You've had to play one less game of football in preparation to this one against a relegation threat inside. Doesn't make much sense to me, but ho oh, hum, it's each to their own. Um, I like the position that Celtic are in right now. I like the position Rangers are in right now. Um, and it's going to be a very entertaining next few games. Listen, I'm all up for this this challenge. I'm all up for seeing how this goes come the end of the season. Who knows? Rangers might come to Celtic Park, beat Celtic, and all of this conversation could be made futile. I look forward to it. All the point and what I'm saying is today is this seismic change in the momentum swing that has happened in the Scottish Premiership this afternoon benefit Celtic and Celtic only and there is no denying that at this point in time you can come back and clip parts of this video in five six weeks if you want doesn't take away from the fact as I sit here on the 14th of April right now there is a reason Celtic are now favourites to win the league title because we've been seeing it on the park and now we've just got to take it into the split fixtures I've always loved the Highlands always beautiful place Dingwall lovely town even when they're knocking us out of cups years ago <laughs> you know I've always loved it Love Dingwall. Um, this is huge. It, it can't be understated how huge it is, really. Um, but as I said, it is now heads down. We don't know who we're playing next. Well, we do. We're playing Aberdeen in the Scottish Cup semi-final. Mm. In the league, I mean. We don't know who we're playing next. We don't know where the game will be. But as soon as Aberdeen's done with on Saturday afternoon, um, we, we need to just turn our focus to the next game. We need to keep the heads down. We need to work hard at Lennox Town. And we've got a fully fit squad coming back to its best now, apart from obviously Dyson Maida dropping out. We've got Hitati and Cameron Carter-Vickers and Callum McGregor all returning from injury, all getting back to full fitness. We're in a really well-placed situation right now. Um, and it fills me with confidence heading into these games. But it's going to be fun. It's going to be really fun. That one point advantage could be more than one point for all we know. It's four as it currently stands, but that's you know there's no guarantee that Rangers could have beat Dundee after what we've seen today. Um, it's just it's a good place to be. A lot of Rangers fans forfeiting. Um, you've seen the reaction at full time. You've seen the reaction on social media. A lot of Rangers fans giving up. Football's a funny old game. A, a, a funny, funny old game. It really is. So. Aye, we'll watch how this all transpires. As I said, this league is not over. It's far from over. Um, and, and, and the way that Celtic have played this season, there is always a chance that we drop points along the way. We've played well recently. It fills me with confidence that we can win every game. But you look at the top half, you look at Harps, Kelly, St Mirren, Dundee, they all present a challenge, a, a unique challenge at that. And depending where these games will be played, we've seen a slip up at Tynecastle and Rugby Park this season. You've seen a slip up at Ibrooks this season. I know we'll be playing them at Celtic Park, but you know, there is plenty of opportunity for Celtic to slip up. So it is just about focusing and, and getting that mentality installed within the team that we can do this. And come match day 38, then we can proclaim who the champions of Scotland are. Can't we? Right, that's it for today. Big smiles. Um, if you've enjoyed, like and subscribe. I'd imagine this is a controversial one in the comments section. Play nice. You know? Play nice. Um, aye, it's been a pleasure. I'll see you all next time.